about this and possibly to Speaker Pelosi. That would be where it ends, yes. Okay, so so let, let's park that there and then let's jump to a, a second set here. Um, in a press conference on January 7th, Speaker Pelosi called for your resignation on national television. Speaker Pelosi also stated that she had not talked to you since the initial breach of the Capitol. But according to your transcribed interview, you were on the phone with Speaker Pelosi a few times. Uh, can you explain that discrepancy? Yeah, that is, uh, that, that is correct. I uh, spoke to Speaker Pelosi um, three times uh, that, that evening. And uh, she went on national TV and said I'd never spoken to her, but I spoke to her three times. Um, the three, uh, three times were the first time when I went over to brief uh, President, uh, Vice President Pence at the secure location. Um, I had called uh, um, House Sergeant Arms Irving, told him I was going over to brief the uh, Vice President. I was also going over to do a personal assessment of the Capitol. At that point, things were getting under control. Uh, went over there, briefed him on when we can get them back into chambers with you know, uh, Mr. Irving being fully aware. Uh, he said he wanted to get Speaker Pelosi on the phone. He made a phone call from his cell phone at approximately 534, uh, where I first briefed Speaker Pelosi. Uh, the second call was when I left that location. As I was walking away, I met up with Mr. Stinger, and we started walking over to the Senate to go brief the Senate. When uh, Jennifer Hemingway, I believe it was Jennifer Hemingway, handed me his cell phone, and it was Emily Barrett's cell phone calling her, and it was Speaker Pelosi on the other line. This is my call, second call with Speaker Pelosi. Questioning the information I'd given to uh, Vice President Pence about when we can get back into chambers. I assured her that information was correct. I could get them back into chambers by 7, uh, 7 p.m. And the call ended. That was call number two. Call number three was 6.25 p.m. I was over at the Senate uh, from the secure location. I mean, from where the Senate had been sequestered. Uh, and on a uh, cell phone using Robert Karam's cell phone, they dialed leadership, who was over off-site at a secure location. And I briefed all of the leadership of the plans to get them back into chambers. That would have been call number three with Speaker Pelosi. So you didn't have one call, you didn't have two calls, you had three calls. So Speaker Pelosi's comments that she didn't speak to you are inaccurate. That is correct, sir. Let me let me shift gears and go back uh, as it relates to the optics of bringing people up to Capitol Hill and, and running things up the chain of command, ultimately to the Speaker's office. Do you think Speaker Pelosi's office uh, or Speaker Pelosi herself um, politicized Capitol security? Um, I, I, have, I, have no, I have no idea on that, sir. Okay. Uh, any other clarifications you'd like to make as it relates to Speaker Pelosi's comments that you didn't speak to her? Um, I just, you know, wish she had considered that, wish she had considered some of the stuff that I faced and the efforts I went through.